Hey everyone, this is uh, my latest addition to my hangar. This is the FRC, Foamy, FRC Foamies A10 Watt Hog Mark 1. Now, I've taken a much longer than I probably should have uh, in getting this one together. I've been distracted by some other projects that I've been doing. Uh, so much time, in fact, that while I've been building it, FRC Foamies, the guys have come out with a Mark 2. So there is actually a newer version of this, but this is the Mark 1 that I've built. So this is a old Defon model again, 6mm Defon. Um, it is the famous A10 Warthog. It is a known as also known as the Tank Busted uh, plane. Um, before we get into any of the details about the construction, I will give you a quick tour. Okay, so this is the A10 Warthog close up. Uh, you can see it has straight wings, not swept wings, like most of uh, my jets. Um, it does, however, have the motor all the way at the back, and it's one of the only planes that I have, or the only plane that I have that has that. Uh, up here is the hatch. We just open it, secured down with magnets as usual, and in there we have our 2200 battery. Um, let me see if I can get close up in there. There is the receiver and the ESCs here as well. Now, <clears throat> with this one, because the motor is all the way in the back, it is difficult to get balance. So all of the electronics really have to be in the front and the servos have to be as far forward as possible. Now, speaking of servos, uh, there are only three of them in this plane. There are only three moving surfaces. Firstly, the uh, ailerons. So the ailerons and the elevator at the back. Uh, let me show you those servos. So I've tried to put them as far forward as I could. So the wing servos are here. There we go, next to the pod. Or inside the pods. The pods here are just for, uh, for the look. They don't actually have any function. They just uh, in in the actual plane, they would of course be the um, additional fuel tanks. The elevator servo is also right up here, as far forward as possible on the on the wing. And we have a long control rod that goes all the way back. So there is some uh, special care that needs to be taken in. Um, Assembling the plane because of this long control rod, and I'll get into more detail there in a minute. Okay, the motor I've decided to use is a 2826 um, 6 Turnergy, uh, it's a, and there's a 6 inch prop on there. The motor is a 2200 kV. Um, so that is the tour of the plane. Um, You've got these big engine pods on this plane, on this plane, which uh, I think look really cool, but of course they're non-functional. Um, but they do look pretty, pretty, pretty nice. One thing that I enjoyed about doing this was putting this little face, this grizzly face, on the front, which is um, uh, which a lot of the uh, the fighter companies in the actual air force have. Uh, they do put the paint this face on, and up here is this um, gun, um, which I've actually put in is a, uh, as suggested, is a uh, bushing, a plumbing bushing, just to add some extra nose weight. Um, more on that in just a second. Okay, so that was the uh, tour of the plane. Um, just to show you the throttle, I do have a throttle safety. So. Uh, this motor does deliver a lot of power, but I think we're going to need almost we're going to need almost all that power just to get it airborne because it is a pretty heavy plane, with that, especially with that 2200 up the front. Now we do need that 2200 battery in the front here, um, primarily because of the balance issue. We've got the motor way in the back. There's um, three wires going all the way to the front. ESCs up here, um, receivers up here, batteries up here. So everything's in the nose. Even so, 
it still ends up being a bit tail heavy for me, um, which is why I put this bushing in here, which is the gun. This is what uh, Greg, the, the, one of the designers, had suggested. Put a bushing, which is actually just a, it's a brass uh, plumbing fitting. I've just wrapped that in some black tape to make it look black and um, fitted that in the front to look like a gun. I've also added a little bit of um, carbon tubing in there to look like uh, the, the actual gun tubes. And that's just for effect. Um, it's not all that, uh, fun it's not at all functional. functional. Um, usual two antennas here, so you've got um, diversity of antennas, uh, which is you know, part of the free sky system. This does have um, these twin rudders here, but they're non-functional, so they don't move at all in this in this particular build. Um, probably a good thing. Don't want to add any any more weight to put servos in and get those running. So those are fine. Leave those as is. So really, all we have is the elevator and aileron. Uh, well, aileron and elevator. Um, so special considerations. Yes, uh, as I was saying, the the push rod that runs all the way from the, the as far forward as possible on the wing all the way back to the uh, the elevator back here that you really have to be careful and secure so I've put a zip tie to just to secure that to make sure that um, that push rod doesn't flex as it, as it moves also you want to make sure if you're using these um, these little nuts to hold the uh, the push rods in place, make sure that the screws are really, really tight. These are the quick release screws for the um, for the servos. Um, okay, what took me so long? Actually, I got this thing built together pretty quickly. It went together really easily. The plans are fantastic. I really highly recommend FRC Foamy's plans. They're really, really good. Um, it went together really quickly, um, built it really quickly. What took me forever was the paint job. Um, the paints that I ended up buying, this is, I tried to do a desert uh, cam camouflage kind of a uh, motif, but um, the paints that I bought, I normally use an acrylic paint, water-based, um, and they're usually really good, and I can use, um, thin them down with some water and use the airbrush. This, this time, the batch that I bought, the brand that I bought, the paint was really sticky. It was still acrylic water based, but it was sticky and it just wouldn't work. So it took me forever. I had to. I ended up uh, brushing manual, manually brushing with an actual brush all the paint, all the paintwork on there. So it just took me forever. And at the same time, I got distracted with some other projects like my tricopter and some other things that I decided to, to decided to do in between. So all overall, it's a beautiful model. It looks really nice. Um, I hope it flies really nice, it hasn't been maiden yet, so you will see the maiden shortly. This is just a pre-maiden review. I spent a lot of time beveling the wings, so all the front edges are beveled, all the back edges are beveled. Now, in the Mark 1, they've just got a double layer of foam to make up the wing. In the Mark 2, they've actually gone with a folded wing. Um, so, I mean, with all the beveling that I've put in, from the front, I've, you know, I've put a beveling in back and tried to make a nice wing shape, front and back. Even on the um, the stabilizer at the back, I've done the same. All the <clears throat> the rudders, the leading edges have been uh, beveled a little bit. I've sanded the intakes here in the front. So having done all that, it's really like a Mark 1.5 because it is it has you know some nice rounded corners and some shapes, it has some actual shape to the wing. So it's not purely a <clears throat> FRC Foamy's Mark 1. All of that sanding and shaping of the wing, that took a while too. Um, inside the wing here, um, we've used a, it's got a four millimeter carbon spar, normally for um, all the RC powers designs and some of the flight test stuff, I've only used um, three millimeter. Um, normally I only use a three millimeter carbon spar. Um, but for all of these, um, for, for this particular plane, I've used four, a four millimeter carbon spar. I did ask Greg and Jay about using a three millimeter spar, maybe doubling it up. They said you're going to have enough wing stress as it is. You might, you should really go for a four millimeter or greater. So I went, I 
did it as advised and took the form, uh, bought a four millimeter uh, carbon spar. Um, so that's it. Yeah, that that took a while, all of the shaping and all of that. Um, but with the Mark II, it's a folded wing. It should be a lot less of all that shaping and all that stuff to do. All right, so that's it. Uh, Maiden coming up shortly. See you there.